Here we have the Yuchi Katana. Is It's a katana in Elden Ring. That's right. The Yuchi Katana scales primarily with st strength and dexterity. And is a good weapon for piercing and slash damage in combat. It's one of the first katanas you get in the game. It's got a name that looks like someone just threw a bunch of vowels together without reason. I mean, a madman just looking to embarrass you in front of your friends when you mispronounce it. Hey guys, you want to see my Yuchi <laughs> Gitgunda? This katana is basically the starting katana. Like, literally, you can start the game with this katana. All you gotta do is weeb out and pick samurai as your starting class. But don't fret. If you don't want to start as a samurai, you can still get your sticky mittens on this weapon by going to the Death Touch Catacombs in Limgrave, which is an early location and relatively easy to find and access early game. It has a decent starting damage at 115 and it causes 45 bleed damage. That's right, you'll hit somebody and then they'll bleed for a couple seconds and wonder what the f just happened, you know? The Yuchi Katana Scales primarily with strength and dexterity, and it tends to make my lady parts all tingly when I use its Ash of War unsheathed. Yeah, I like to put my sword away and then SMACK PEOPLE WITH IT! <laughs> you don't even see it coming! And then put it away and SMACK THEM AGAIN! <laughs> yeah, they uh, do not like that. Not. One. Bit. But, uh, if you don't like sheathing your weapon like a boss, you can always change the Ash of War that it's infused with. It can also be upgraded 25 times if you got the stones, the runes, and you want to make low-level enemies pee in their panties. Now this weapon requires 11 in strength and a 15 in dexterity to use properly. The description of the Yuchi Katana is a katana with a long, single-edged curved blade. A unique weapon wielded by samurai from the land of reeds. The blade with its undulating design boasts extraordinary sharpness and its slash attacks cause blood loss. That's right, extraordinary sharpness. Yeah, it would be on one of those 2 a.m. infomercials uh, that could cut through anything, even like a sneaker. Yeah, so uh, you wanna get your hands on that right away. Either way, the Yuchi Katana is a great weapon in the game, even though it's one of the weapons you start with, it can be a lot of fun to use, it's got a great Ash of War, and it's a very effective weapon, even early game, that you can level and keep effective even into your late game playthroughs. I rate this weapon one lobster that's disguised as a dog. Oh shit, I think they're on to me. Next up, we've got the Naga Kiba, which is also a peculiar name. This blade is definitely compensating for something. Uh, you, I mean, you don't walk into a blacksmith and ask for a 10-foot blade unless you've got some sort of complex you're trying to work out. I mean, imagine the blacksmith getting that order, though. Wait, ha wait. How big do you want it? Guy, that is... Just too big. No, seriously. That makes no sense unless you're trying to tickle a cloud, man. Why? Why do you need this so big? What is your malfunction, man? What's your deal, buddy? Why do you need a fucking sword that's this long? It's confusing. I don't think I have enough material. Either way, uh, it's a great sword. Look at it. It's fucking super long. It's like the longest goddamn katana I've ever seen in my life. You could bitch slap a fictional creature from across universes. I mean, you could kill someone in a different video game with this sword because it's just that fucking long. You'll be playing Elden Ring and you'll kill someone in Super Smash Bros, okay? Stab him right through the heart. Either way, uh... <laughs> This is, uh, this is a really cool sword, okay? It's a katana in Elden Ring. It scales primarily with strength and dexterity, just like our Yuchi Katana, and it's a great weapon for dealing blood loss damage on top of that physical damage, you know? You want as many damages as possible with these types of weapons. Now, the description for this weapon is a katana with a ferociously long blade. That's, uh, it's the signature weapon of Yura, Hunter of Bloody Fingers. Yes, you're uh, the Hunter of Bloody Fingers. We all know him from his book series. Reminiscent of a reinforced spear, its imposing length can be put to good use with powerful thrusting attacks. That's right. You put a powerful thrusting attack on this thing and it will get just about anything pregnant. It's incredible. It really is. Um, now, if you want to get your hands on this blade, then you can get it from uh, Bloody Finger Hunter Yura. He's actually located in the north of uh, Murkwater Cave. Or you can find it in his camp uh, near Seaside Rune's Site of Grace. It can also be obtained by completing Yura's quest line 
at the Second Church of America, allowing you to also obtain Eleonora's Pole Blade and Purifying Crystal Tear. So that's good. However, if the quest line is missed, the weapon can be found in the Seaside Runes map. After having looted the Ronin set of armor off Finger Hunter's dead, lifeless corpse. Yeah, by the Zamar Runes Site of Grace. So it's, it's a lot to take in right there, what I was saying. If you really want to get your hands on this weapon right away, as soon as you see a guy wearing a thumbtack on his head, a giant thumbtack on his head, just, just kill him. Just beat the ever, slap his cheeks together, whatever. As soon as he dies, he'll give you this, but... You might uh, have a hard time getting his armor set after that. That's the only problem. If you kill him, you might not get the other perks associated with doing his quest line. The best way to get this weapon is to do Yura's quest line, okay? The worst way to get this weapon is to just kill him outright, you know, because you don't like his big hat. I've done it both ways. Weapon skill is Piercing Fang, uh, which is basically like a poking thrust. Thing that he does it's uh yeah he just really gives it a hard poke but you can change the ash of war on this particular weapon whatever it's infused with you could change it so if you like unsheathed or whatever you can you can put that on there as well it's one of the only other katanas that you can actually change the ash of war on the other one being the yuchi katana so keep that in mind you can throw around some uh some decent ash of wars on this bad boy it can be upgraded 25 times if you got the stones it can be dual wielded with other katanas, which is nice. It's hot. Naga in a modern Japanese is a divine snake or dragon, sometimes with a human head or human upper body. Kiba means fang in Japanese. So Naga Kiba basically means snake or dragon with big fangs, which makes no sense. Or maybe it means a dragon's fang. I don't know. I don't know, but uh, it's cool. It's cool nonetheless. So that's a little history lesson for you guys. So swallow that, enjoy that. It's real fun. Uh, either way, it's a great weapon in the game, which you can find relatively early on in the game if you want. However, if you're gonna do Yura's quest line, it's gonna take you uh, quite a bit longer. It'd be mid-level progression in the game, not late game, but sort of mid-game before you finish Yura's quest line. So just keep that in mind. All right, this weapon, one toilet eating a toddler. It's got Billy again! Oh, God! And here we've got the Serpent Blade, which again is another katana in Elden Ring. Now, the Serpent Blade scales primarily with strength and dexterity. Sounds familiar. It's a tail as old as time. And it's a good weapon for high dexterity characters to engage in mid-range combat and is capable of inflicting both slash and pierce attacks. That's right. It's hot. It's hot. Now, if you want to get your hands on the Serpent Bone Blade, well, then you're going to have to go to the Volcano Manor and talk to fucking the King of Jerusalem or whatever. You know, she's all mysterious and whatnot, wearing a mask. I don't know if it is a she. Uh, you know, I, I you can't tell because she's wearing a mask. She's all mysterious. You don't know what she identifies as. She could identify as a fucking attack helicopter for all I know, right? All I know is she tells you you gotta kill your own kind just to keep skulking about in her fucking creepy mansion, you know? So she'll give you some contracts in the form of a letter she'll leave on a table. Uh, you go read that shit and then you go invade some innocent NPC somewhere and smack their cheeks together. And every time you do it, she'll gift you something. You do it twice, she'll give you the serpent bone blade. She's just a real, she's a real nice person like that. She's dark, but I mean, everything in the lands between is a little fucking shady, so who's to say she's not the good guy? I mean, she's not going to get any fucking Disney specials, that's for sure, but she might not be that bad. I don't know. The Tarnish could be the bad guys for all we know. I mean, everything's a bit vague. Anyways, you do a hit contract for her. She feels really good about it, so she fucking hooks you up with some sweet things. I.E. the Serpent Bone Blade, which, if I had to venture a guess is made out of some sort of bone taken from a serpent, likely against their will. Yeah, I don't think serpents are just giving out their bones all willy-nilly. No, you probably had to hold them down and pull that shit out of them. He's probably screaming and freaking out. Ah! 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 You know, but uh, at the end of the day, you got it, right? Which lathers that shit up with poison instead of bleed damage. And so now every time you smack people around, they get a little poisoned. It's not the greatest katana in the game, but it sure as hell tickles my nuts. Yeah, it does. 
Make sure you don't kill the boss in Volcano Manor before you do the Volcano Manor missions, or you won't be able to complete them, and you won't be able to get the Serpent Bone Blade, which is a good sword, which is a good katana in the game, and definitely worth worth having. Now, its weapon skill is Double Slash, which is a cool skill. The more you hit it, it will start slashing repeatedly. It's not just a Double Slash, uh, so it's a it's a cool little uh, weapon uh, skill to use. Yeah, it will it will smack. It, it'll smack. It, it's fun to use. And this weapon, again, it can't be infused with any Ashes of War. You can't use consumables on it or anything like that. Now, this weapon, although it can't be infused with another Ash of War, meaning you can't take Double Slash off of it, Double Slash is pretty good. You can't infuse other Ashes of War in it. However, it can be upgraded with just normal smithing stones, which is unique. So that means it can be upgraded uh, 25 times, which is kind of unique for a weapon like this that has sort of a locked Ash of War. Right, so it's it's unique in a lot of ways. It does poison damage instead of bleed damage, and again, it can be upgraded 25 times for a weapon that has a locked Ash of War. It seems a, it's a unique weapon, but you're going to need an 11 strength and a 22 dexterity in order to wield it properly. But uh, definitely worth it. It's a lot of fun uh, to get. Again, it's going to take you a little bit to get it. It's a late game slash mid game sort of weapon that you're going to get. So you're going to be a decently high level, hopefully, by the time you get it. But it's a good weapon. Definitely worth it. So it's got its standard version. It does 120 physical damage. But if you upgrade it all the way to the 25 or plus 25, it, it ends up doing 294 damage, which makes it one of the, the stronger physical damage weapons in the game. So really cool weapon. Definitely recommend it. Uh, Serpent Blade, you know, you basically pull the dick off of Serpent and you start smacking people with it. It's pretty incredible. So get your hands on that by doing the Volcano Manor missions. Uh, you know, go talk to, you know, the King of Jerusalem or whatever her name is and, uh, and get, get to work. All right, this weapon, one goat, I'm pretty sure, is brain damaged. Um, hi. Now, the Meteoric Ore Blade scales primarily with strength, dexterity, and intelligence, and is a good weapon for dealing melee slash and pierce damage in combat. Its accompanying unique skill can also allow the user to thrust their weapon into the ground to create a gravity well to pull enemies in and damage them in the process. This also will stun certain enemies, allowing you to get a couple free hits on them, which is also really cool and a really great addition to this weapon. Now, the, the katana itself is forged from meteoric ore to dispatch life forms born of falling stars. It deals magic damage, and the blade is weightly known to deliver slashes of such ferocity that the impact is said to resemble the crash of a falling meteor. It definitely lives up to its name when you're stabbing the ground like a fucking lunatic uh, and pulling people in, you know? It, uh, it definitely has that sort of, that sort of feeling like you, you, you just threw a goddamn meteor into the ground, you know? Now, in order to get the meteoric ore blade, uh, you have to go over to the Khaled Waypoint Ruins. It's found inside of a chest in a small room at the back of an underground hall filled with weird prawn-like creatures and, uh, and sorcerers and shit. And in order to get there, you actually have to get past some of these nightmare-inducing insects. Yeah, these things look like they'll lay eggs in your brain and donkey punch your naked corpse. They are weirdly sexual as well with how they wave their body fingers around. At first, I didn't like it. Now, I can't live without it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going in my diary for sure. Now, the entrance to the area is found in the northwest section of the ruins, which is right here. Once you get past all these creatures, you'll uh, you'll be able to get it out of a chest. It's no big deal. The weapon skill is Gravitus, which we talked about earlier, where you stab the ground, you pull people in, you can stun them a little bit, smack them around. It's pretty fun. Now, it can't be infused with any other Ashes of War. This is the only one. That's all you get. It's all you have, Okay. It also can't be enhanced with magic nor boost it by consumables, okay? But the Meteoric or Blade can be upgraded by Somber Smithing Stone. And it is a fun weapon, but its starting attack power is 112. It does do 72 magic damage, which is good. Uh, that sort of helps as well, but uh, it does scale with strength, dexterity, and intelligence. And if you're doing a melee build, which is probably the case, if you're running bladed weapons, you're probably not investing too much into intelligence. Not to say that all people who wield melee weapons are fucking idiots or anything, but what I'm saying is oftentimes when people are doing melee builds, they are putting a lot in their strength 
into their vigor, into uh, dexterity, and into their endurance, uh, and not so much into intelligence. So it, it is scaling with those things, so it can be tough. It does cause blood loss buildup of 50, just like many of the other katanas. It has a unique heavy attack compared to other katanas. Strong downward slash akin to uh, Kendu techniques. Once you upgrade it fully, it, uh, its physical damage does 274 and its magic does 176. It does do a lot of damage when it's fully upgraded uh, if you include the, the magic on top of the physical damage as well as whatever your character damage is on top of that. So it can be a very powerful weapon in the game. However, I still don't think it's one of the best weapons because it's Ash of War really is just pulling people in closer. There's other Ashes of Wars, especially with the Katanas, that I think are more effective. But that's personal opinion, right? <laughs> you can't hold that against me. I do think it's probably like maybe the third best Katana. Third best or fourth best Katana. Okay? I don't know. There's not a lot of Katanas. So really at the end of the day, uh, who's to say? Either way, guys, it's a, an amazing weapon in the game and definitely an excellent addition to any melee build. I rate this weapon the look this monkey gave me just before I showed him my penis. Needless to say, I can't come within 500 feet of that zoo anymore. Here we got the Moon Veil, which again is another katana in Elden Ring. The Moon Veil, again, scales primarily with strength, dexterity, and intelligence, and is a good weapon for dealing melee slash and pierce damage in combat. Its accompanying unique skill can also allow the user to draw the weapon at great speed for an instant slash attack and fires off a wave of light. Yeah, so it, it can actually hit them from a distance, which is nice. The katana is forged of glintstone, a masterpiece of Selian swordsmen. Light enwreaths the blade when sheaths, explaining its Moonveil moniker. What that means is when you sheath this weapon and pull it out real quick, it uh, it shoots a load right into people's eyes slash or face region. Yeah, it's uh, super fun to use and it's absolutely excellent. Now the Moon Veil weapon can be found in the Gale Tunnel. Yeah. You know what makes this weapon truly special? Is having to go spelunking through this cave and then having to kill some scabby anorexic miners who are minding their own business. You know, just trying to make ends meet in the lands between best way they know how. Sure, we could just walk by most of them, but when I look at them and their backpacks are all filled with treats, I get all violent and stabby. Don't worry though, because karma catches up to you when you actually fight the lizard beast with the big sword. Why this lizard dragon is harboring so much anxiety and hoarding the moon veil, I'll never know. It's just one of those mysteries, I guess, like how they get peanut butter in Reese's Pieces, or why all the tardish are like hobbit-sized in this universe, all tiny and shit. Once you defeat this giant magma monster, you'll get the moon veil. And it's a sweet weapon that'll make your vagina parts all moist and tingly and wet and shit. It's an amazing weapon. Again, one of the better katanas in the game, one of the more enjoyable ones. Its skill set is a lot like unsheathed. It puts the sword away and uh, and swings it out, but this time it swings it with a uh, little glintstone at the end, uh, which serves more damage and can hit people from a distance. So it's doing magical damage and physical damage instead of just physical damage. The weapon skill, or its Ash of War, is actually called uh, Transient Moonlight, which causes the wielder to sheath Moonveil. And a follow-up light attack creates a horizontal short-range wave of magic. A follow-up strong attack creates a vertical medium short-range wave attack. Both commands are fast and deal high damage, making this an extremely powerful weapon art, only offset by its high FP cost. So yes, that, that is the offset, is the more you use this weapon, you are going to burn through FP, which uh, if you're a strong melee character, you might not have a lot of FP to offer. So mm, pros and cons, right? Pros and cons. Now this weapon cannot be infused with any other Ashes of War. It can also not be enchanted with magic nor boosted by consumables. However, the Moon Veil can be upgraded by somber smithing stones and it does cause a blood loss of up to 50. Yeah, it's uh, pretty sweet. So it does start with a physical damage of 73 and a magic damage of 87, but if you scale it all the way up, it ends up having a physical damage of 178 and a imagined damage of 213. Yeah, and it still does that 50 bleed damage in your passive effects as well. Making it again, one of the stronger weapons in the game. Uh, an excellent, excellent weapon. Uh, remember, this weapon requires 12 strength, 18 dexterity, and 23 intelligence to use, which can be a lot of intelligence, especially early game. So just keep that in mind. 
I rate this weapon one photo of Dave Batista crying or shitting or both. Maybe he's upset because he farted a little too hard and it got away from him. We've all been there. Yes. Sadly, we've all been there. Oh my goodness. Here we have the Dragon Scale Blade. This sword looks badass. It does. Look at it. Just look right at it. It just looks intense, doesn't it? It looks really nice. Uh, the Dragon Scale Blade, it does scale primarily with strength and dexterity and is a good weapon for slash and pierce damage. Now, it's a weapon that is made by sharpening a gravel stone scale. Thought to be the source of an ancient dragon immortality into an unclouded blade. That's right. So, thought to be the source there of uh, dragon immortality, but uh, probably not. I don't know why dragon immortality would have anything to do with a sword, uh, but there it is. Alas, the dragon kin soldiers never attained immortality, nor would they, right? Uh, because you're stabbing yourself with a sword, probably not gonna be immortal for too long, right? And they perished as decrepit, pale imitations of their skyborn kin, right? Yeah, it's Ash of War is, it's a lightning sword, right? It's honestly, of all the katanas in the game, it's, I like it the least. It's not that great. In terms of a dash of war, it really doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't tickle my taint, you know? It doesn't make my balls swell up or anything like that. It's just, it's a nice looking sword, you know? It's got that for it, you know? It's a, it's a pretty sword to look at. Uh, it cannot be infused with other ashes of war, so you can't improve its ash of war if you don't like it. That ice lightning sword is, is what you get. That's it. It can't be enhanced with magic nor boosted by consumables. The dragon scale blade can be upgraded with somber smithing stones, but I would recommend that you invest those in other katanas uh, or other melee weapons as this is to me not uh, not worth the investment uh, of your somber smithing stones unless of course you have an endless supply of them the guard boost goes from 32 to 30 at plus 10 so that's weird i, I don't know why it does that but uh there it is so again it doesn't make a whole whole lot of sense to to upgrade it all the way to to plus 10 but it does start at a physical damage of 110, and then if you upgrade it all the way to plus 10, it does 269. So there it is. And it it gives you a shittier guard boost. So it's a, it's a sword, and it looks good. And looks sometimes do matter with weapons. Sometimes you just want to walk around and look good. This is one of those swords. Very much surface level, I find. But... Anyways, now if you want to get your hands on the dragon scale blade thing, you're going to have to go to the river of rot or the lake of rot or the garden of rot. I, I have no, it's the rotting place. It's the big, it's the, it's the mass body of rot. Okay. And then you're going to have to venture into the middle of this fucking decrepit place. And then you'll see this big guy uh, all passed out on the river of rot after going hard day drinking or something. I mean, he's hung over. It's obvious. And if you get too close and give his big old taint a tickle, he'll start freaking the fuck out. I mean, you're not sleeping face first in a river of rot without making some questionable life decisions. That's all I'm saying, okay? This guy is unpredictable. Is this the best katana in the game? No. No, it is not. Is it the second best katana in the game? Also, no. But it does look nice and it has a cool name which makes me want to rub it down with massage oil and spank its ass. But that's a story for another time. Now, in order to get this bad boy, you're going to have to wake up a sleeping dragon, which is never a good idea. I'm pretty sure in the book of what not to do with sleeping dragons, I'm pretty sure poking them in the face when they're sleeping is never a good fucking strategy. I rate this weapon two guys who are really high, but went to work anyways and pretended they weren't. Do you think they noticed, Peter? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> We're good. Rivers of Blood is a katana in the game. And yes, it is as cool as it fucking sounds. And now it does scale primarily with strength, dexterity, and arcane. Arcane is one of those things, if you're doing a melee build, you're probably not investing too much into arcane. However, uh, it's definitely worth it to use the River of Blood katana because it is an amazing weapon in the game. It's one of the best, if not the best, katana in the game, in my opinion, okay? It's a great weapon for mid-range combat. It is capable of inflicting both slash and pierce attacks. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, pretty awesome. 
Now, who would have thought uh, splashing people in the face and body would be such an effective means of combat? I know it's a great way to get people to think you're crazy or to get a restraining order, but who knew it bodied ghouls and goblins and shit? The Ash of War on this weapon is truly enjoyable to use, and it's very, very effective at killing enemies in Elden Ring. The weapon of Okina, swordsman from the land of reeds, a cursed weapon that has felled countless men. Oh, yes. Uh, not women, though. It's it's very sexist, this weapon. Now, when Moog, the Lord of Blood, first fell to Okinawa with sword and madness, okay? Just started rubbing his sword in his madness one day. Thought, hmm, this, this feels nice. He said, uh, upon his flesh, he had a proposal to offer Okinawa the life of a demon whose thirst would never go unsatisfied. So basically what happened is this, like, demigod touched his sword, thought, hmm, that feels nice. You know, that feels fresh. It's a little warm, you know? And he said, this sword, it's going to make you want to kill people like an absolute serial killer. And you're never going to be able to stop. You know, every time you kill someone, it's going to make you feel good for a second. Then you're going to need to get another hit. It's never going to be enough. That's what this... And honestly, that's why probably this sword is so good. And it's because it needs to kill. It needs to kill. You know? Now, the Rivers of Blood can be found at the following location. It's dropped by Bloody Finger Okina. Okay, Okina invades near the Church of Repose, found in the eastern region of the mountaintops of giants. Yeah, that's right. Right here on your map. Yeah. Now, getting it is not all that hard. All you gotta do is beat the pants off of a senior citizen who will invade your game if you get too close to this church. Now, interrupting his prayer time before his episode of Murder, She Wrote gets him all hot and bothered. Once you manhandle Grandpa over there, he'll uh, give you the sword and his head, which you'll be able to wear into other battles like an absolute psychopath. <laughs> yeah, it's really awkward. Um, anyways, now the weapon skill is Corpse Piler, which basically splashes blood into their face, neck, and body region, and it hurts them a lot. Uh, people don't like being splashed with blood in this game at all. It's not a good feeling. I mean, it wouldn't be a good feeling in real life. In a video game, it also not fun. Now, it can't be infused with any Ashes of War. It can also not be enhanced with magic, nor boost it by consumables. However, it does cause a blood loss of 50. Okay, so again, one of the better blood loss weapons in the game. It's, its physical attack starts at 76 physical and 76 fire, which is... Still pretty good. When you stack it all the way up, it gets to 186 physical and 186 fire. However, this weapon, again, fused with its Ash of War, makes it one of the best weapons, if not the best katana in the game. It's real close between this and the Hand of Millennium. It can be upgraded with the uh, Somber Smithing Stones, again, to go from its standard version or to that plus 10 version if you've got all the Somber Smithing Stones as well as the Dragon Somber Smithing Stone or whatever the fuck the last one is. It's super fun to use and it's an excellent addition to the game. The earlier you get this weapon, the happier you're gonna be. I rate this weapon one hippo trying to eat another hippo. Mmm, get over here, yeah, I'm gonna eat you right up. What the fuck, Terry? We talked about this. The Hand of Millennia. It, uh, it scales primarily with strength and dexterity and is a good weapon for a samurai build and bleed builds, okay? Uh, the description says it's a blade built into Melenia's prosthetic arm. Through concentration, it is resistant to rot. Melenia's war prosthesis symbolizes her victories. Some claim to have seen wings when the weapon was raised aloft. Wings of fierce determination that have never known defeat. Yeah, whatever the fuck that means. Uh, anyways, it's, uh, it's a sweet, sweet sword with one of the coolest and deadliest Ashes of War in the game, Water Foul Dance, which uh, when you swing this thing, it just goes flailing about all over the place, just smacking and hitting just any random person who would be uh, just in, in its path of destruction. It's just ruthless. This weapon cannot be infused with different Ashes of War. It cannot be. Uh, so the Water Foul Dance is pretty much all you get. But again, one of the most unique and coolest Ashes of War in the game. And very, very deadly. It will smack cheeks. There's, <laughs> there's no sugarcoating it. It will smack all the cheeks. It can't be enhanced with magic, nor boosted by consumables. What you see is what you get with this weapon, but it's already a super powerful weapon in the game. However, it can be upgraded with somber smithing stones. So if this is your favorite weapon, get out there, get some somber smithing stones and upgrade it. However, getting your fingers on this weapon is no easy task. You have to fight Melenia. She hangs out way up here 
in that Hal Halgatry or whatever the fuck the name of this thing is. Uh, basically, it's like the borderline equivalent of Narnia in this world space. It's difficult to get to. There's a lot of rigmarole associated with it. I'd have to make a whole video. But basically, once you get here, you can fight Melenia and, uh, and she'll give you the weapon. Now, to get to Melenia is a whole other ball of uh, a dirty ball sack it's a uh, it, it's a whole other ball of wax if you will you have to do all sorts of uh, uh of, of things to get here so she's one of the, she's definitely one of the late game characters so this is not a weapon that you will have access to early game and to be honest with you you probably won't be able to beat her early game unless you're just the best dark souls player in the fucking world um she is by far one of the most difficult people to fight in the game. She's one of the hardest bosses. Now this might be the world's scariest handicapable demigod. This lady haunts me. Needless to say, I wake up screaming in the middle of the night in a cold sweat thinking Melenia is camped out in my closet. Like she's E.T. in a mountain of stuffed animals. Her eyes just peering at me between those fuzzy little faces. Waiting for an opportunity to spring out and smack me across my lips. With that said, if you do want this weapon, you'll have to face your fears and fight this cyborg, which is basically borderline a hate crime. Then if you do beat this disabled woman and don't end up on an FBI watch list somewhere, she'll come back again as a fucking bat thingy, which I'm still trying to work out with my therapist. But if you do manage to win, she will give you her remembrance, which you can then take to that eyeless crusty bitch at the round table hold. And you can turn it into the hand of Melenia. Or a spell. I mean, the spell is good too, but this sword is sure to make you feel like you're all hopped up on Mountain Dew when your man's slapping NPCs in every goddamn direction with that waterfowl dance skill set. Oh yeah. It's definitely an amazing reward to have this weapon in the game and then to be able to use it in your NG Plus playthrough. It's a super fun weapon, an excellent katana, if not one of the best katanas you can get in the game. Uh, it's, it's absolutely incredible, so definitely go check it out. Now, this weapon does a physical attack. Its base physical is 117. However, that it, it will scale with strength and dexterity. And at its, uh, at its standard plus 10, so if you were to upgrade it completely with the Somber Stones, it gets up to 286. Plus it does 50 bleed damage, which is insane. And if you're using the Water Foul Dance, that thing's going to hit uh, like 25 times or 30 times every time you use it. So it's, uh, it's a pretty incredible, pretty incredible situation. Note, if you want to be effective while using this weapon, you do want a lot of... Uh, you do want a lot of endurance. You want a lot of stamina uh, because it does drain your stamina bar really quickly. So just food for thought, food for thought. All in all, great weapon though, great weapon. I rate this weapon one baby that's just seen a ghost but doesn't know how to communicate his trepidation. Oh my God, that is definitely a poltergeist. Thanks again for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to bitch slap that subscribe button like it's three weeks behind on your rent. <laughs> bitch! Where's the money, bitch? Where's the money? Where is it? Also, go ahead and hit that bell icon, too, because apparently YouTube thought there should be extra steps. Why not, right? I'd like to subscribe, but first I have to click this and this and do this. Oh, it needs an email. All right, and this. Okay, fuck. Just tell me when he's uploading. Fuck! Once you do all that, if you're lucky, at the stroke of midnight, a tiny little average baiter's fairy might come and tickle your butthole. I hope to see you all again next time, and remember to keep on average baiting, baby.